Hello, welcome to the course on polymers where we are looking at uh, concepts, properties, uses and also sustainability. So this particular lecture, uh, the focus uh, is on uh, sustainability and uh, let me tell you why. Uh, in this week now, we are going to start looking at uh, polymer processing and uh, recycling techniques. So polymers are used so commonly uh, because uh, their processing is also easy. Uh, why do I say their processing is easy? One, uh, we can have very fast processing times. Uh, injection molding, for example, in two seconds you can make a part. Also, you can make very complex shapes. And all of this can be done at temperature and pressures which are not extremely high. So therefore, there is a general ease of processing associated with uh, polymeric materials. We can make large volumes rather easily. And uh, given that our emphasis is on sustainability also, while we are looking at polymer processing, we will see whether many of these polymer processing techniques, how useful they are for recycling as well. And in this particular lecture, we will look at uh, one aspect of uh, processing where uh, we can process the waste plastic uh, by dissolution and recover the polymer itself. And, and so, uh, why is this important? Uh, we will look at uh, by first uh, focusing on the different types of uh, mechanical and chemical recycling processes that are generally available. And uh, then we will finally look at the dissolution as a phenomenon itself. So let's first look at uh, the overall uh, idea of how polymers are integrated into the overall cycle uh, associated with its production and its use. And this we have uh, seen earlier also that uh, uh, synthesis of polymers happens, polymerizations, and then uh, they are led to mixing and uh, modification and for a given application we need to make a formulation and compounding is done generally. And then the fabrication and processing happens and, and this particular week we are going to focus a lot more on these processing operations. Once processing is done and service life uh, is uh, over, then the material becomes a waste material. And of course, uh, one of the things that can happen is uh, it can immediately uh, go to uh, a waste uh, disposal site uh, where it can interact with soil, water and air. And in, it's our endeavor now to try to minimize this as uh, making polymers uh, improve their uh, sustainability. So then there are options related to mechanical recycling which uh, immediately will uh, uh, let us use the polymers once more maybe with uh, additional mixing, compounding and modification of uh, additives and so on. And uh, other way also is to reuse the material as we have discussed earlier. However, there are other options related to what is called chemical recycling. Why are we looking at chemical recycling as a way of uh, uh, improving? Uh, the uh, sorry state of waste handling in case of uh, polymeric materials is because uh, there are challenges associated with mechanical recycling. Even though mechanical recycling uh, seems to be easiest in terms of implementation because we have all the processing techniques which are in place and uh, then uh, we can just collect the plastic and then uh, recycle them back and reprocess them and again continue to do this as many times as we want. But then there are issues because degradation in the polymer may have happened during the service life. And why is this so? Because uh, there is always uh, oxidation possible. Though macromolecules are stable with time and with temperature and with uh, availability of oxygen, availability of free radicals, availability of acidic groups and so variety of conditions under which small amount of oxidation can happen. And when we are now trying to reprocess this, this can also lead to further oxidation and therefore the properties can vary significantly. Similarly, some breakage of uh, chains can be there or branching and cross-linking. So formation of new uh, bonds in macromolecules can be there. Secondly, when we are processing itself, uh, these processes can again happen. Where macromolecules can break, macromolecules can branch and so on. In general, what this leads to is change in molar mass as well as molar mass distribution. And so, when we are trying to do this again and again, ideally what we would like is uh, 
if we once make the polymer and if we can uh, just do this cycle again and again that we use the service life, then mechanically recycle, do compounding processing, use it again and so this will be an ideal thing. But unfortunately, at each recycle, there is a degradation in property. And so therefore, chemical recycling is also an effective way uh, of uh, trying to reduce the amount of waste that uh, gets to the soil, water and air. So therefore, uh, our emphasis since is to reduce amount of waste which comes to soil, water and air, chemical recycling becomes an important option. Now, what are the different chemical uh, recycling methods which are available? So you could use combustion and uh, one way to uh, deal with waste is just to burn it without even worrying about the operation as such. But that is actually just uh, not other than reducing the amount of waste, it is not doing anything. So generally what you can do is while combusting it, you can try to recover the energy. So therefore energy production using combustion uh, is also possible. Uh, the other thing that can be done is uh, using uh, some solvents, we can try to recover the monomers and these monomers can be again fed back to the polymerization and then it can become a part of cycle. Alternately, uh, we can also have these uh, uh, rather than doing combustion, we can do pyrolysis or gasification reactions rather than converting the macromolecules all the way to CA2 and water, which are the usual combustion product, let us say for a hydrocarbon product, we can try breaking it down where we get maybe pyrolyzed uh, fuel like product or uh, fuel uh, in terms of uh, petrol like product or we could get gases which are again useful and which can be again used as fuel. So therefore, these are different uh, ways in which you could chemically recycle. One other important way of chemical recycling is by dissolution. So can we not uh, take the plastic waste material and uh, devise a strategy of dissolution and then reprecipitation so that we can get the polymer back and then we can again compound it, process it and reuse it in the as a product. Now the advantage of uh, this dissolution is that the physical, uh, the chemical changes, the chain scission and all of those processes can be minimized. So just to give you why this dissolution and recovery is a promising option, uh, I am showing you some uh, calculations uh, done in the literature where uh, they are looking at uh, basically the impact of each of these uh, recycling options which are available. And it is uh, measured in terms of a carbon dioxide equivalent emission index. So how much carbon dioxide is emitted if you do any of these operations. And uh, incineration which is the worst where we are just burning without getting any other use from the waste uh, is 100 let us say. Then what happens is if you at least try to do energy recovery along with incineration immediately the emission index comes down. So it becomes a more uh, favorable process from a climate change and from a sustainability point of view. If you do just a landfill and assuming that macromolecules are not going anywhere else, they are not interacting with water and soil, then uh, maybe it has again certain uh, value. If you do pyrolysis by which you get a product which again can be reused as part of several other uh, processes, industrial as well as consumer processes, uh, then it again becomes uh, somewhat less of an impact. And uh, if you do mechanical recycling, that is again very good relatively because again uh, in terms of carbon dioxide emissions, you are not, you are not again reproducing those macromolecules and, and so, but it has limited use because after 2, 3 use again you will generate waste. And also mechanical recycling uh, would involve uh, uh, re re removal of some of these additives and so on, sorting and things like that. The other thing you could do is to use a solvent and break down uh, polymer and then you can obtain the smaller fragments which again can be reacted. So this also could be improvement. But look at uh, at least the estimation uh, from the literature, uh, dissolution and precipitation seems to be the best option. And this is so because there is less breaking of the polymer structure bonds and uh, because of that uh, the recycled product promises to have a higher quality. Because whenever we are doing mechanical recycling or any other uh, reactive processing, 
the control on what exactly do we get at the end is a little bit less. In the dissolution precipitation, we are getting basically the same polymer that was used earlier. So therefore, it leads to possibly a better environmental performance. So therefore, let us look at uh, what is this macromolecular recycling through dissolution. So the idea is to dissolve the polymer from waste and uh, of course, this is not trivial because we have a mixture of uh, polymers generally, it is a mixed waste plastics, there are multiple polymers there. Not only that, there are lots of additives from compatibilizers to pigments to UV stabilizers. We, we have seen the whole gamut of small molecules and uh, uh, um, uh, oligomers uh, and macromolecules which could be part of a commercial polymeric system. And so generally what we would have to do is uh, look at a combination of solvents and uh, for precipitation anti solvents or co solvents and non solvents so that we can devise a proper strategy of dissolving precipitating dissolving precipitating so for example uh, toluene acetone or xylene hexane for uh, are known good solvent systems for uh, polyethylene and polypropylene of course one of the problems in this process from a point of view of sustainability would also be the impact of the solvent itself. So, we could have uh, organic solvents uh, which are being used and uh, the problem uh, with them is related to the environmental impact. But therefore, uh, there is a lot of work which is going on uh, related to ionic liquids or plant based green solvents or supercritical fluids to minimize the impact during this dissolution recovery process. So, the stages that we can see in this are following that there is a dissolution and then there is a filtration and then there is a crystallization precipitation to get the polymer and then solvent has to be recovered so that it can be again uh, used back in dissolution. Now, uh, just to highlight how we can uh, devise a solvent non-solvent system and how do we design this kind of a process which is very effective, we will have to start looking at interactions between solvent and macromolecular systems. And uh, of course, we have seen that solubility parameter is one way to figure out uh, what may be a good solvent system for a given polymer. And this exam question uh, asks, you know, which is one among the solvents which are given, uh, which is the best one for polyethylene. So, having knowledge about uh, solubility parameter, you should be able to quickly get the answer to this. Now, the uh, having a good solvent is not the overall thing because dissolution rates in case of polymers are generally very slow. And uh, this is because what you have is basically a macromolecular system which is uh, most likely in a glassy state and then you have the small molecule which is trying to diffuse in. Eventually what our goal is to get a system where the macromolecule is molecularly mixed with the solvent system. So, we want a solution from let us say a film using this solvent. So, what has to happen in this process is first solvent has to get absorbed and diffuse. So, solvent uh, should be able to diffuse through the macromolecular network. So, that is a crucial requirement first. So, some amount of solvent has to go. Then once this solvent starts interacting with the macromolecular segments, flexibility, segmental flexibility goes up and therefore, segmental relaxations can start happening. And once sufficient segmental relaxations can happen, disentanglement can happen because in the end we want polymer in the solution form. So therefore, uh, when we look at uh, any amorphous polymer which is exposed to a solvent, there is a very complex uh, set of processes which are there and there are different layers that you can see in terms of the film which is there and the solvent which is there. So there is a very next to the film itself, uh, there is a liquid layer where there is a very nice uh, segmental mobility of polymers and uh, solvent and polymer molecules are well mixed. Next to that, there is large amount of uh, solvent. So, therefore, there is a swollen gel like layer 
but the polymer is still entangled and that is why the performance is still gel like and large amount of solvent is there. Beyond that uh, still small amount of solvent is there and therefore, there is a rubble like layer with small amount of segmental flexibility. And then finally, there is the glassy layer of the polymer film which we were trying to dissolve. So, you can see that uh, dissolution rate therefore, is going to be very slow because the polymer molecule is not having any segmental mobility. To get the finally dissolved polymer, we need not just uh, segmental mobility, we need disentanglement also. So, therefore, uh, if you have a semi crystalline polymer, there is an even uh, uh, bigger phenomenon of uh, crystal melting because of solvent. So, chain has to unfold, the secondary interactions uh, which are very important during formation of the lamella have to be overcome, and uh, therefore, dissolution of semi crystalline polymers again will be a slow process. The other thing that uh, in this diffusion uh, description that I have described to you is the fact that how important solvent polymer interactions are and the diffusion of solvent is very strongly influenced by solvent and polymer interactions. This is generally uh, referred to as anomalous or non fickian diffusion because uh, we saw Fick's law uh, in case of uh, uh, 61st lecture where uh, the flux was uh, related to the concentration gradient. And then there was a constant uh, which specified that uh, how much will be the flux, the diffusion coefficient. But in case of uh, polymeric systems, since the solvent is interacting with macromolecule and changing the free volume or changing the segmental flexibility, the diffusion coefficient starts changing as more and more solvent comes in. So, therefore, this is a function of how much solvent is there. And so, this leads to what is called the non fickian diffusion. So, diffusion is no longer based on uh, Fick's law where DAB is a constant value. And uh, because of the macromolecular relaxations, because of the segmental uh, conformational changes in macromolecules, the phenomena is referred to as anomalous diffusion because when you look at how fast or slow the solvent molecule diffuses in, it shows a very different behavior. So, for a Fickian uh, response, generally there is an increase and then becoming constant. So, what I am plotting here is uh, the amount of solvent absorbed in the polymer as a function of time. And generally, this is plotted as a square root time because then this becomes a straight line and the slope of this in fact gives us DAB. So, this is for Fickian diffusion, but for non Fickian diffusion, we have cases like this where diffusion is very slow initially and then it becomes very fast and then it uh, becomes constant. So, that is why we call it anomalous diffusion or non Fickian diffusion. So, at a fundamental level also, the process of dissolution is very much influenced by these diffusive processes and the interaction between solvents and polymers. So, it is very interesting from the point of view of understanding. So, I hope based on the solubility parameter, you have been able to arrive at the answer that uh, wherever solubility parameter is very close between two substances, then they are likely to be having favorable interactions and miscible with each other. So, with that we will close this lecture. Thank you.